Always. We ask the question. What is needed in the world? They did it. After more than a year of division, infighting and lack of international support, the Syrian opposition leaders are finally presenting a united front. They've been independently fighting, day in and day out, to get rid of the Assad regime. Intense wrangling in Doha, leading to a common platform and a basic message to the world, a new post-Assad era is on the horizon. Efforts in the UN Security Council to isolate the Syrian regime, so far fruitless. China and Russia blocking sanctions against Assad, and as long as the opponents were seen as lacking in a shared vision, there was no compelling voice calling for action. Now, such a voice is emerging. Mu'ad al-Khatib has been elected the president of the new Syrian National Coalition. He's the imam of the most important mosque in Syria, but many abroad still wonder who he is and what he wants. All wonder, can he keep the opposition united? Will the world support his new group with arms and international recognition? And will the UN Security Council now finally act? And there is the question of how was this new unity brought about? Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, we speak with Mu'ad al-Khatib, the president of the new Syrian National Coalition and the man who led the negotiations that produced the deal, Dr. Khaled al Atiyah, Qatar's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. Mu'ad al-Khatib, the president of the new Syrian National Coalition, thanks so much for talking to Al Jazeera. You are most welcome. First of all, do you believe now by forming this coalition, you have truly united all the Syrian opposition factions. In fact, I can't say all absolutely, but the majority of them, they are with us, and the gate is open for everybody. And I expect many to come, and maybe all. Is the ball now in the court of the international community? I think yes, because many countries has has promised us to support us by many kinds of support. And we will see because our group has created just before a few hours. Which countries and what kind of support? Can you give me any details? In fact, for example, our brothers here in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Emirates, uh, some European union, unions, some European uh, countries as uh, Fran uh, France, Italy, and many other uh, countries promised us to, to help. Because really, uh, what's going is un unbelievable. And I think uh, with days, it will be something a shame for all the nation, uh, international uh, society to uh, keep sil silence uh, when they hear and see our blood go and go without any step to stop it, to stop the blood. Do those promises include international recognition? Have you been promised that you will be recognized as the legitimate representative of the Syrian people? In fact, we will work so hard for that. We have some promises and we will continue to, to have that. I expect to gain it. How soon do you plan to announce a temporary government, to set up a government inside Syria? Uh, to be inside or outside, not, it's a technical uh, point, uh, but we expect uh, through a few weeks to announce about a new government for the time being. And it could be based outside of Syria? Maybe some inside, some outside. It's technical, related to the circumstances and the ability of work. Have you been promised any weapons? When I spoke to some of the armed groups which are part of the Syrian National Council, they said, we don't just want money. We don't just want food. We need weapons. And we need anti-aircraft weapons yeah. in, in particular. Have if any promises like that been made to you? In fact, there are some friends. I can't mention their names they will, will help us. Do you really believe this time you won't be let down by the international community, as many in Syria feel they have been on previous initiatives? 
I like to feel positive about that. And uh, really the courage or, of uh, our people give us more of hope, not hopeless. Our people uh, going in their uh, way and uh, they will gain the victory at the end. There was a lot of uh, criticism of the opposition by the US Secretary of State in the past. What is your message to the United States and to Hillary Clinton now that you've formed the National Coalition? In fact, I hope the rule of US to be more close than before, especially after Mr. Obama succeeds in the election. Congratulations for the Americans people, in fact, because I think they, be lo they love their home and we love our home. And we expect from the coming government in the US to give more of help, political or any kind of uh, help, to save our people from kill because they have the ability to affect many decisions in the world. Do you think they will do that now? I hope they will. I hope. Because the level of violence uh, arrived to levels unable to, to close your eyes about it. And I hope. And as I said before, uh, when I see its emotional point, but really, I love the tear. You love the tear? In eyes of Mr. Obama. Because it's, uh, it's a peer kind of humanity inside his heart. Of course, in politics, there is something different. But I think who he loves his home, he will understand our love for our home. And he will help us. Sir? Um, when we also speak to some of the Syrian opposition groups, they say they really need some kind of international military intervention. Yeah. Do you still think that that is necessary? In fact, if we will have some kind of uh, military help, we don't need that because our people can continue and I prefer our people to continue. And you're confident you will get the level of military help that will enable you to defend uh, yourselves fact, without... will uh, create a military council and he can discuss that by details. And we prefer everything come by the hands of Syrians but by the support of friends. As you know, the last few days of negotiations have been very, very difficult. A lot of the Syrian opposition groups which were involved in the negotiations going on in Doha told me we're worried that we're taking a jump in the air, qafza fil hawa, to use the term in Arabic which was used. What would you say to them? What would you say to them to assure them that this isn't a leap into the unknown? that you do actually have something in return for the compromises that the members of your coalition have made? As I said, uh, our group has, has came to life just before a few hours. And uh, people, I will tell you more deep details, the regime in Syria through 50 years, it cracked everything and the difficulties and to be united together. One of the main reasons, these viruses which put inside our blood and our mentalities. Now I think we recover. Maybe it, it's not so fast, but it's going up, alhamdulillah. And uh, I think day after day, people, when they will uh, see the traces, all of them, they will unite again and uh, kick out th this regime and back again to be one nation with one heart. What sort of future Syria does the new president of the National Coalition, uh, an imam of the main mosque in Damascus, what is your vision for the type of Syria that should exist after Bashar al-Assad? In fact, it will be as it was in all the history. 
full of tolerance and love. I can say for you, we need Islamic State. I am not interested about the names. I'm interested about the core. It will be full of tolerance, tolerance. Now all the people discovered the pain of others. Muslims, Christians, Alawites, Druze, Ismaili, Arabs, Kurds, all of them. The understanding of each other growing up. And I think it's one of the fruits of this revolution. I would say some problems will happen in discussions because we are as a man, he couldn't drink any water for a long time, then he found a cold water. Maybe he will go so quick or so fast to that, and maybe he will have some problems in his stomach, but at the end he will have the stabilization. Uh, everything we talked about that openly, everything related to the uh, kind of state, uh, how people will choose their uh, principles, it will be after first free parliament, after collapsing the regime. But in, in your vision, it was interesting you mentioned the, the, the term Islamic State, and a lot of people have that question. Will it be an Islamic State? Will it be a democratic state? Yeah. Will it be a civil state? Uh, will it be all of those? Yeah. I mean, what is your, your vision? I mean, people, they have the full freedom to choose what they like to continue their life with. If they will choose Islam, if they will choose any other thing, all of us will respect each other. We will preserve the rights of the majority, minorities, uh, Islamists, other groups, seculars. I look to, to the seculars as part from the society, and I welcome any difference in the society. Why? Because it gives us more of richness, because one color is not so good. Any garden, it will be so nice if it is full of flowers from all the kinds. Did you ever think, sir, you would be today the head of the Syrian National Coalition? No, never I thought about that. And really, I thank all the people who elected me. It's a heavy duty. And really wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me and just the uh, responsibility towards my people pushed me to accept that. Never I loved to be involved in such work. You have no desire in politics. I will work as I can. <laughs> Is that a difficult task for you, being a man who never had any political ambitions and finding yourself suddenly in this heavily political role yeah. in a very fractious situation. I will work not by myself, I will work by the hands and hearts all of my people and uh, the eyes of children who has killed and slaughtered will give, it, give us the power to continue to the end to kick out this regime. Well, kicking that regime out may need some foreign help. But the big question is, what sort of help will they now get from the world? Will it include weapons? What about international recognition? And who will deliver all of that? One man who might have some of the answers is Dr. Khaled al -Atiyya. Qatar's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs played a key role behind the scenes in bringing the coalition together. International committee now, they have moral obligation, legal obligation, and uh, humanitarian obligation toward the, the people of Syria. Uh, whoever, uh, uh, you know, uh, whoever thought that uh, the opposition is not uh, in a solidarity uh, status now is mistaken. Now they have become together. They have proven that they unified their vision. They seek our help as, you know, uh, as, as an international community. The Security Council now, they, have should, they should now uh, uh, resume their responsibility to protect the people of Syria. Otherwise, the people of Syria will lose faith in everybody. We understand from uh, leading members of the National Coalition that they intend within a matter of weeks to put together uh, a temporary government, as they're calling it, and it will be based inside Syria. 
Will Qatar recognize that government? Well, Qatar and the friend of Syria, let me put it this way. Qatar, the GCC, uh, uh, friend of Syria, uh, uh, Turkey, to be honest with you, the, 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 the whole, the, the general, most of the General Assembly member in the, in the United Nations, they do support uh, Syria. Unfortunately, we are stuck in a, in, in a, in, in a, in a deadlock with, with, the, with the Security Council because of, you know, the, the, the famous uh, vetoes. Uh, well, but but can you move outside of the Security Council and recognize yeah, yeah. this government even without Security yeah, Council for sure. recognition? Now, now, now the Security Council, if it stays like this, we have a president before. We can go back to 1952. There was things called Resolution 377, United for Peace. This is, this is now legitimate if the coalition have asked and come forward. If we don't do something to them now, if the Security Council did not protect its integrity and move forward to protect the people of Syria, these people now, they know their rights, they know how to go, they have friends now. They have a friend where can, they can show them the way. When they do set a government up, a temporary government inside Syria, Qatar will recognize that as the legitimate government of Syria. Well, Qatar is not uh, alone on the international arena. Qatar is part of friend of Syria and Syria case. Qatar is a part on the GCC, the Arab League, and all of us, all of us are uh, ready to recognize this body because we know that this is the only way to help the people of Syria to come together uh, and, and, and reach their goals, reach their goals which they've been dreaming of, freedom, you know, they want freedom, they want to have better life. Uh, so, so, yes, uh, if your question is to recognize, yes, we brought them here, we encourage them to unite, the, to unite their vision because we want to recognize them and we want to help them to get their rights. If that happens then, sir, that opens the next question is, will there be the provision of arms? When I spoke to military uh, leaders who were meeting here in Doha, they said, as was echoed in the uh, conference, we don't want just money and bread. We need weapons, and particularly anti-aircraft weapons. Is that something Qatar could provide once well, you've recognized them as a legitimate temporary government inside seeing, Syria? Seeing their uh, article of association, seeing the, uh, the agreement they did together, when they get the legitimacy from the international arena, they can go and contract whatever they want themselves because they will be recognized as full legitimate, legitimate uh, government, whether on exile or whether inside Syria, or whether it's a technocrat or politically. But with the time when we recognize uh, this body, then they can seek their own weapon. They can see their own means of, of, of self-defense against this massive and, you know, massive aggression from the regime. So, uh, so it's possible. This, this could happen. Through this, if you have if you have chance to look into the agreement they signed and their article of association, they not only they did not only sign an agreement, they did sign the agreement, they endorsed their article of association, and they went further. They finished their election, which is uh, which is uh, very rapid. This is shows you this shows you how determined they are to protect their people. People on the ground in Syria would really like to see, at the very least, Arab action to create no-fly zones. Is that something that's possible now that there's been this breakthrough with this initiative? Let me tell you something, my friend. The Syrian people does not, does, does not need, does not need an, an, an outside intervention or any international intervention tangibly directly into Syria. They but need, so they're asking for it. We, they we need, no, let me tell you, let me tell you something. They need the means to defend themselves. They are capable, they are capable of creating their own uh, non-flying zone. If the international arena support them with the means to defend themselves against this airplane and tank, they've proven that they can do it alone. They don't want us to come and, 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 and stop the regime airplanes or tanks. They are asking for the means, the, the, the unconventional means. Uh, they cannot stop an airplane with AK-47. They cannot stop a, a, you know, a heavy tank with, with, with the means they have. And they've been bombarded heavily every day. 
give them the means to defend themselves and they will create to you a, a, a non-flying zone. Uh, and you feel now that that day is coming very soon where Qatar will be able to give them that means? Well, whoever was hesitating that the Syrian will not uh, you know, uh, unify their vision and then we will have to wait until they do so. Everyone in the front of Syria was here in Doha for four days and I thank them very much. As you know, just a short while ago, the U.S. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, while on a visit to Croatia, had some strong words for the Syrian National Council. She said that the opposition couldn't be led by people who'd been outside of the country for some 20, 30, 40 years. Looking at the composition now of the national coalition, do you think that they've met those concerns, that all the reservations that the United States may have had should no longer exist? Every uh, element of the Syrian opposition, if I don't, I don't want to tell you numbers or statistics, but if you, tell, if you look to the composition of uh, the coalition, you will find that everyone almost is represented now, from local councils and upward. Everybody is represented. Uh, scholars, uh, you name them, they are there. They, they know their responsibility. They needed somebody to facilitate and to bridge the gap between them. They were all marvelous. I've been with them for three days, maybe 16 hours every day. I was optimistic from, the day, from minute one. I never felt that we are going to fail. I felt that I am... I am never for a moment? You never, never had any doubt? Never, never, it, never. It's been tumultuous even, even if it's Even if it gets so tough, I knew that we are going to get there. Because you are sitting with the people who knows what they want. They just need somebody to come and gap the bridges to them. And unfortunately, you know, we've been, we've, been, we've been trying, but we did not put more effort on it. When we decide with our friend of Syria that you know, what's happening in Syria is enough, let us pull the strain and put the effort, everybody together, and put a plan and show them how they can gap these differences between themselves we succeeded today. But what, what though, what did you use to bridge those gaps? Because I've been talking to them for days and there were points where it felt like there were a lot of gaps and big gaps that seemed almost insurmountable. You must have put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, but I'll keep this because if I lost my job, you know, I can find... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the position of Russia and China might now change? Do you have any reason to be more optimistic? We urge Russia and China to reconsider you know, their position on Syria. Uh, do you think they will? Do you think the Russians I'm sure, now... I'm sure, Chinese, I'm sure China will do. China, they don't like to interfere with, you know, in, 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 in. this is their, their strategy. In internal and, affairs and, of internal other affair countries. And policy. And we, this, we appreciate very much. And I'm sure they understand what's happened today. The, and, and the Russian, I'm sure, with the message released by the opposition today to the Russian, will encourage Russia now to reconsider their position. This uh, is what and happened. you think they will? We, we might soon see the day where both Russia and China, you believe, will, will back this initiative and reorient am, their position uh, towards the Assad at government. Least, at least what we know, at least what we know from, from the conversations with, the, with, the, with our friends that, you know, Russia is not certain of the vision of the, mm -hmm. and they are not united. They've been in, you know, they finished in Doha. They are united with their vision. They know what they want. They have signed and found a coalition. We are going to take them further until we get them the full recognition. Now they are there. Mm -hmm. So whoever, whoever is helping the regime against their people in Syria, I think now the time is to reconsider. Dr. Khalid Al-Atiyah, thanks so much for talking to Al-Jazeera. Thank you very much.